Welcome to worship this third Sunday after Pentecost and a very blessed Father's Day to all dads, grandpas, godfathers, and others who provide paternal care and guidance. Today, Jesus points those that he is sending out into a hostile world to his Father in heaven, whose hard truth sometimes causes fracture in families on earth. But do not be afraid, he says. Our Father in heaven knows and loves with more strength and depth and endurance than any trials or troubles here can match. that Christ is raised and dies no more. Embraced by death, he broke its fearful hold. And our despair, he turned to blazing joy. Alleluia! We share by water in his saving death. Reborn we share with him on Easter life As living members of our Savior Christ Alleluia The Father's splendor clothes the Son with life The Spirit's vision shakes the Church of God Baptized we live with God, the three in one. Alleluia! A new creation comes to life and grows As Christ's new body takes on flesh and blood The universe restored, a whole will sing Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Children, guess what? I am so excited. I finally, finally got a haircut. When we were done, the lady who cut my hair said, hey, stop, look at the pile of hair on the floor. It looked like someone had shaven a yak, just a mountain of brown, like everywhere. And I was so excited. I felt so good. You know what? I forgot. I forgot to count my hairs. Well, I guess we can try to figure out how many I have left, right? Let's see. What? One, two, this might be a while. One, two, three, no, that's four. One, oh, forget it. There's no way to count all the hair on my head. 
How would anybody possibly know that? Listen to the gospel today. In the middle of a whole pile of sayings, Jesus says, even the hairs on your head are counted. God knows how many there are. Wow. So you can go and try to count how many you have, but you know what? Good luck. You're probably not going to get them all. You're probably not going to get the right answer. So go ask your parents, and guess what? They don't know either. Only God knows. There are things that only God knows. A lot of things. Like how many hairs are on Pastor Brian's head. That's why we trust God. Because we know there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. But God knows. And what we do know, God says over and over and over again, don't be afraid because I love you and you can trust me because I have your best in my heart and in my mind. Now, yes, there are times when it's hard to trust that because some things don't feel as good as a haircut. A lot of stuff is hard. But God says, I know things about this that you don't. Hang in there. Stick with me. I will always stick with you. I know stuff you don't. And what I know is that you're going to be okay. I'm going to make sure of it. I love you no matter what. So that even when you die, you're okay. You're safe. I got gotcha. you. Let's pray. Thank you, O oh God, for making us so amazing. For every hair on our head, for every person in our church, for every day you give us, for all of the gifts, including the ones that we don't know, but you do. Keep working on us and teaching us to trust you when we don't know stuff. Bless all who are dads and fathers, that they may also grow more and more like you, wise and loving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with, that, with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O oh Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the 12, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, 
how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake, will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Tony Campolo preached an infamous sermon that you might not want your kids to hear. Luckily for you, The ancient dream has finally come true. In this brave new world, God's people finally have the power to mute the preacher. Get ready. Because here's what Campolo said. I have three things I'd like to say today. First, while you were sleeping last night, 30,000 kids died of starvation or diseases related to malnutrition. Second, most of you don't give a shit. What's worse is that you're more upset with the fact that I said shit than the fact that 30,000 kids died last night. What is most important? What are we afraid of? What are we most offended and most threatened by? What matters more, the lives of others or my own personal sensibilities, expectations, worldview, comfort zone, desires? Avoiding these questions is one of countless seductions of white privilege, which looks to be fading away, finally at long last, thanks be to God. And these essential questions have been front and center on capital steps and city streets and social media across our country now for weeks. 
and with no escape havens of entertainment or sports to shield us from their intrusion. No sand anywhere in which to bury our heads. So maybe now, in 2020, we are finally ready to hear Matthew chapter 10. Jesus doesn't mince words. He exposes so many of our favorite things, security, safety, money, stuff, privacy, reputation, conflict avoidance, and yes, even family, as idols. He is preparing his apostles to go out into the world to cast out demons and preach the ultimate priority of God with no gold, no silver, no bag, no guarantees. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. He tells them to expect trouble, especially from the authorities. That's what the cross is, after all. It is the inevitable, predictable result of telling the truth, which, Gloria Steinem famously noted, will set you free, but first it will piss you off. Well, if you don't believe her, Go spend 10 minutes on social media. You will quickly find a morass of defensiveness. A sprawling wasteland of liberals and conservatives alike. Launching partial truths like grenades while avoiding discrediting, attacking, denying, and rejecting any and all shreds of truth from the other side because they cannot bear the possibility that any exists. And then the terrifying implications that come from that. There are many sharp points out there that will puncture your own preferences if you have the courage to let them. Have no fear of them, Jesus insists. Have no fear of the truth, because the truth knows things you don't. The number of hairs on your head and the death count of sparrows and the truth is someone who loves you. And the truth will set you free. But do not expect to enjoy the journey getting there. Jesus is introducing his new apostles and those of us who are the latest heirs to their daunting assignment to the very old truth of Jeremiah. When he was only a boy, God saddled Jeremiah with a call too heavy for adult shoulders. See, God said, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow to build, and to plant. In that order. There is no Easter until after Good Friday. There is no weight loss without diet. No surgery without a knife. There will be no adequate justice in this country until a lot of attitudes, investments, commitments and institutions get plucked up and pulled down. There is no growth in our minds 
or hearts until a lot of assumptions, certainties, comforts, and preferences get destroyed and overthrown. There is no resurrection in our soul until our ego gets crucified. No freedom without loss. No joy without pain. There is no Christ without the cross. It's the truth that I don't like to preach that no one likes to hear. Just ask Jeremiah. He spoke the pointed perilous words that God gave him, poor sap, which left him less popular than Colin Kaepernick on Flag Day. By chapter 20, Jeremiah is 18 chapters past done. And Israel (laughs) is completely done with him and hatching multiple plots to mute the preacher permanently. It has gotten raw and real and ugly. And even the translators cannot handle Jeremiah's language. Lord, you have seduced me and raped me. You had your way with me. I'm a punchline, a public disgrace. Monica Lewinsky, but without the dignity and respect. Whenever I open my mouth, your truth comes out. So everyone wants me dead. Whenever I shut my mouth, the heartburn suffocates me until I have to vomit out your message. You won't even let me die in peace. You stand by me like secret service, keeping me alive and miserable. And I'm so stupid or desperate or broken that I stick with you too. My apologies to Jeremiah. If I cleaned that up too much, the original was much nastier. There just aren't words strong enough for the bile in his mouth or the fire in his bones. Nor strong enough for the invitation that Jesus issues when he says, take up your cross, follow me. The truth stings. Love hurts, but do not be afraid of them. Because God is with you like a dread warrior. Like it or not, God will get you through to verse 13. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. You will build and you will plant. On the third day the Son of Man will rise again. The destination, invisible and unfathomable from here, is more than worth the awful journey. I think Leslie Dwight has her finger on this. She asks, what if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally, Awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change. Declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other farther apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. I looked ahead. 2020 ends with the seventh day of Christmas. The fire in Jeremiah's bones 
will become a baby in Mary's arms. The sword on the preacher's lips will become a smile in your laughing heart. The dangerous truth of God will become a tiny, fragile, resilient, beautiful hope born into a world that does not give a shit, but then raised from the world's murder by the God who does, the real God, the unflappably determined God who takes it in the neck and still sticks with This violent, resistant, recalcitrant, stubborn, stiff-necked, hopeless world around us and within us enough to tell it the truth that it wants to mute and drag it kicking and screaming into hope and bludgeon it into beauty and kill it into life like a dread warrior who does not and will not leave our side. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure. Through a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirits lore. Onward in his footsteps treading pilgrims here, our home above. Full of faith and hope and love. Let us do our Father's bidding, faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Let us suffer here with Jesus, and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness, where he is there is no loss. Through today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All discomforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your woe, help me there your joy to know. Let us gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give us our immortal breath. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin then by grace we all may win untold fruits of his creation jesus unto you i die there to live with you on high let us also live with jesus he has risen from the dead that to life we we may awaken Jesus since you are our head we are your own living members where you live then we shall be in your presence constantly living there with you forever Jesus if I faithful be life eternal grant to Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. When I say, hear us, O God, you are invited to respond. Your mercy is great. 
Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. We thank you at this summer solstice for our solar panels. Fill them with sunlight that the energy we need to do your work is abundant and safe. Renew places where our land, air, and waterways are ill. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us, and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Knowing God, you have counted the hairs on our heads. Heal bodies ravaged by coronavirus and other diseases. Heal communities wounded by violence, injustice, distrust, and fear. And heal hearts broken by grief and despair. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we we forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else, in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else will do. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme and glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, how pleasant to repeat. 
What seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation. From God's own holy word, I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme and glory to tell the old story of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting, no hear it to thy rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new new song, I'll sing the old old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story; twill be my theme and glory. To tell the old old story of Jesus and His love. Go in peace. Christ is with you.